A while back I found these really cool glass cube tanks. They're 8 inches by 8 inches by 8 inches. I was going to put them in my fish room, but then I had a thought. As I was working out of my garden, I realized that it would be fantastic if I could have some hanging pots out here or something. Now, hanging pots are fine and everything, but there's really nothing special or spectacular about a hanging pot that everyone can just buy at the old nursery. So I went ahead and decided to look through my old scrap pile, find some pieces of wood, and make some bolsters that I could stick on the fence and put these glass tanks on them. Here's the outdoor terrarium build and how to. So the first piece of wood that I found was a 1x12 that was kind of weathered, kind of warped, perfect for cutting down and making into other stuff. So I measure, I mark, then I cut. As the old timers would say, measure twice, cut once, because you can't cut it longer. When they say measure twice, that's what they mean make a measurement, measure your measurement, and mark it properly uh, and square it up with something like a speed square so that you know where you're making your cuts and where you want them to be. Once I got my pieces cut out, very simple to take my edge router and to knock all of the edges off of the piece to prepare it for sanding. Sanding was quite simple. I realistically needed to just take my old palm sander with a little bit of 80 grit then a little bit of 150 just to knock all of the kind of weathered exterior of the wood off because I am going to be staining this once the edges are all prepped ready to go that means that we better cut the bottom piece out so I found some old 4x4 pieces that were the tops of some posts that I put in I want to say about three years ago and I threw them in the scrap pile and just left them out there to become firewood or whatever turns out perfect project for right now now the one downside here is is that these are pressure treated lumber and required a whole bunch of extra sanding to get them down past the pressure treat um, so that I could stain it and have all the stain match and the stain that I'm using is a dailies I believe is the name nothing special about it just so happened I had a little can of it left from some project I don't even know when so I decided to utilize that these 4x4s are a little bit goofy and I realized that I would like it to be a little more showy than just a straight flat edge so I went ahead with my miter saw and made a bunch of strange cuts in the end of it and just kind of made it look a little nice then it's on to the uh, Craig jig for drilling some pocket holes, which is pretty simple. I love the Craig jig. I think it's fantastic. I would never pay full price for one, though, because I'm kind of a cheapskate with things like this. Otherwise, I probably would have just made my own <laughs> pocket jig. I did happen to get this one for it was in a clearance bin. The box had been smushed by something at some point in time and gotten all wet and gross. So instead of uh, paying the regular like well over $100, I think it was 22 bucks. So uh, I found that to be reasonable. Uh, I've actually been using it for years. It's a fantastic tool. If you feel like you have $100 or something, it's totally worth it. But to me, I was like, I'll wait until I find a really good deal on that thing. Uh, if you don't have time to wait, maybe just go get one and uh, I use it constantly because it's very useful. The wood glue on this is the Titebond 3. Uh, I do own Titebond 
two, I believe. And I may have some one somewhere, but I don't really use those very often because they're water soluble, unlike the Tight Bond 3, which is pretty good for the outside. Uh, and the reason for that is that I do want to make sure that I have a really good joint between these two pieces because of the extended amount of pressure that will be on this over time. Now, it's not a ton of weight that's going to be on it as soon as I put it on there, but over the long period of time, eventually that kind of has a tendency to kind of screw with things and a little bit of wood glue or even a lot of bit of wood glue, which I was kind of going buck wild with the wood glue here, is okay to help keep those two pieces stuck together and uh, you'll generally have no problems. Stain application is just an old piece of t-shirt and just kind of slop it on because as I mentioned, this isn't really a finished piece. This is an exterior piece that's going to be going onto a fence post. so. I wouldn't stress out about it too much. Uh, just get it applied on there, let it dry, and rock and roll. The screws that I'm using are actually the self-drilling SPAC screws. You can find those at pretty much any big box hardware store out there. Nothing too uh, amazingly fantastic about these, except for they're probably the most expensive screws that you can find, and they work fantastically. So there's that. I'm not endorsed by SPACs, but if they wanted to endorse me, I would gladly accept it. Just saying to anybody out there that may or may not work at that factory. <laughs> uh, bring them out to the fence and make sure that they're nice and level, squared up, screwed in. Nothing too fancy here either because I don't have to measure too much here to make sure that they're straight because these fence posts have kind of weathered and shifted a little bit. Uh, so I just want to make sure that they're level and straight and look uh, legitimate. These aren't going to be completely filled with water unless they're accidentally filled with water. But I do have a plan for that in the future to show you guys how to drill some little holes into glass. Um, but I'm going to wait until the fall to do that because I'm going to make the decision on what plants are going to come inside and which plants are going to stay outside at that point. Substrate I'm utilizing in this tank is actually the Fluval Stratum. One of the big reasons for that, I have a few bags of this on hand already. I get them uh, standard shipped to me once a month via Amazon. Nothing special about it. I'm not like an ambassador or anything, but I do have a good amount of it on hand, and I have used this in some little terrarium applications and pots and things and succulent gardens and stuff like that I've done in the past, and it works out fantastically. There's really no there's really no downside to it in this application because the worst thing that could happen to it is um, it gets all smushed and crushed somehow outside, which I don't expect that to happen. But hey, that's the worst thing that could happen. And considering this isn't going to be running as a fish tank, it's probably not a big deal. Considering the small size of these aquariums, I don't need a ton of this. So I really am just kind of using little bits out of this bag. You will notice that the first thing that I apply into the tank is a piece of what's commonly referred to as egg crate, which is a plastic light diffusing uh, material that you can find at most big box stores like hardware store of any kind. I'm not gonna name any of them, but uh, any of the hardware stores, you can generally find it there. It's simple to cut to shape. And the reason for that is that this is a glass bottom tank. So if I'm gonna put these big rocks in here, I don't wanna crack the bottom of the tank. and that is put in there as just kind of a preventative measure. It takes five seconds, it's not that big of a deal. I just cut it out of uh, an old sheet that I have, drop it in there, then we put the substrate in. The stones that are going in here are actually Sierra stone that I got from Aquarium Co-op a while ago that just aren't in an aquarium right now. Uh, it's not gonna be a big problem to clean them off someday and put them into an aquarium if I like. So we're really not out anything. We're just gonna enjoy these rocks instead of having them in a bucket somewhere in my shop. The wood that's going in here, this is actually the one little sponsored thing that's in the video, is a piece of uh, spider wood that I got from Aquarium Co-op when I was up there a while ago uh, and I got it for free. So feel free to use whatever wood you want, but if you wanna use some of this specific spider wood, you can just order some up from Aquarium Co-op if you like. I 
chose this piece because I wanted to illustrate how easy it is to just pick a cool piece of wood and just stick it in a tank and check it out. Didn't even have to do anything to it. Is that the right way to go about everything that you do? Maybe yeah, maybe no. Sometimes you just got to hit that easy button and uh, roll with it and move on, right? <laughs> so that's basically what I was doing here. Really cool piece of wood, fits right in there. Bob's your uncle, right? You will notice that I am not putting any live plants into this aquarium today because I'm seeding it with dichondra seeds. This is a shout out to my long deceased great grandfather whom when I was a kid got to visit his home many, many times down in Southern California. And he had a front lawn of dichondra and I've always thought, man, I should do something with that. And I finally found the opportunity to do something with that so I'm going to take the opportunity and do it. I will keep you updated on how this grows, but I will tell you right now, this is definitely going to have to come inside. I'm here in zone eight in Western Washington. Uh, it will get cold. It will likely freeze many times. And uh, that means it's probably going to die in the cold weather. So I'm going to have to bring this plant in, but nevertheless, that's always a great opportunity to rescape the tank. I really enjoyed setting this up. I think I'm going to do more of these in the future. I think that's on the horizon. I do have some ideas about building some different bolsters, adding them around the uh, yard that we have here. Uh, we have our garden and everything like that. And I think there's a high likelihood that I'm going to continue working on little projects like this outside. So I would definitely stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button, the like button, the join button, the notification button, turn on the bell, do all that. There's so much stuff on YouTube now. I get it. Hey, if you want to support the channel, you can. Do it whatever way you can. There's buttons if you want to do it monetarily, and there's buttons if you want to do it for free. Do, hey. We live in the future, so feel free to just do what you like to do, right? And I think we'll all be fine. Thanks, and I'll do a video later.